This video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of classes covering topics from game development to salsa dancing. Check the link in our video description if you'd like to find out more and are interested in a two-month premium membership to the site free of charge. Hello, I'm in Peter Molyneux's dining room. Uh, I am supposed to be here. We're going to do what is our first episode in a new series called The Games I Made. Now this series will probably be fairly infrequent because we want to only do it with some of the most interesting names in video game development. And the idea basically is that we're going to go through their entire game development career. And we've got a bunch of uh, physical objects to represent that. We've got pretty much every game that Peter Molyneux has made right here in front of us, as well as some extra bits and pieces. Uh, and before we invite Peter in to take a look and uh, join us in this nostalgia journey, I just want to say a big thank you to our patrons. This is by far the biggest project we've ever done. It's required buying quite a lot of stuff, hiring a camera operator, uh, lots more than we usually are able to do. And that is thanks to everyone that supports us on Patreon. So yeah, this video is for you. And I guess it's time to talk to Peter. Welcome to your own dining room. Oh my <laughs> god, look at all this. How the hell did you find all these? It took a little while. Uh, we have we have the surprise here that you're not allowed to see just right. yet. Okay. Peter Molly, what does your gaming career have to do with a can of baked beans? Well, it, it, it really um, it really kind of started with this person who called Camille de Koch. And she was this girl I really, really fancied. And her dad was this amazing kind of entrepreneurial bloke. Mm -hmm. And he said, he said, um, when he met me, he said, oh, you should start an import export business. And I, you know, because I was just had one thought in my mind, <laughs> I just said, yes. Right. We had a little advert and one of the people that contacted us was this bloke in the Middle East who needed a container load of baked beans. Right. And, hen and that gave me enough money to just to survive. <laughs> And I started the company up um, called Taurus. The head of Commodore phoned us up one day and said, oh, we've heard about your company. We really, really think you're fantastic and everything like that. We want to send a car over, pick you up, show us what, show you what you're doing. And of course, I was just, I had an Amiga at the time. I thought they were, you know, complete gods. You know, <laughs> I didn't have an Amiga actually, but I had heard about the right. Amiga. Thought they were complete gods. They, they drove me up there they looked after they had lunch and they kept talking about you know when you can do your product when you can put your product on there and it turned out that they had got the wrong taurus company right there was another taurus which was t-o-r-u-s and so at the end of it they said you know are you going to be you know putting your developers on this and i, I said Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to get on it. I said, right, fine, we'll send you all the computers. And yep. that's where my first Amiga came from. And then um, a friend of mine had, uh, in fact, this, this yes. is the one, this yep. is the, this <laughs> it's is. It's almost like we've prepared this ahead of time. How the hell did you find this? Yeah. This is the game which he wanted converting over to the Amiga. And because we had the first Amigas in the country, I did the, the conversion not knowing anything about how to do games. Right. And um, and it's true. And I, I, I think you have you got fusion. We have, have indeed. <laughs> I don't believe it. I haven't seen this for absolute year. How the hell oh, did God. you find do, that? Do you have do you, how many of these games do you have uh, personally? Do you do you keep your own? I games? I don't have any of them. Wow. Well, you're very welcome. If anything, if anything catches yeah. your eye from the games that you right, <laughs> you, well, I don't, I don't have. Welcome. Oh no, I have a populace. Okay, I do well, that have makes a populace. Sense. Um, so yeah, with Enlightenment Druid 2, uh, yeah. so you basically, uh, you and your business partner blagged the fact that you could, yeah. you could do a successful port. Yeah. Uh, we could do a successful port. Mm -hmm. I knew nothing about how to, to code games. My answer <laughs> to the frame rate issue was to make the screen smaller and smaller and smaller. If you ever played <laughs> Druid 2 on, uh, on the Amiga, the screen, you know, <laughs> The screen was about a quarter of the thing because I just couldn't get the frame. Oh my gosh! Enough. Wow! But wow. that this then led to Fusion, which mm -hmm. had the same problem. And this is the first game. This is the first game that I worked with Glenn. Yeah. This, uh, this is the, that's, is this the very first game Bullfrog 
producers. This is the very, very first original game that we produced. What was Fusion for people that, that aren't it was, it was a It was a, a weird mixture of a puzzle-based shooter. Wow. What happened is we got the Amigas, we did the conversion, blended the artwork, mm -hmm. and we got paid, we got paid £4,000 for doing this. That was it. That, wow. That's all the money we got. Which had then those days when I was getting like <laughs> a hundredth of a penny <laughs> for each paint painting. <laughs> that seemed like an absolute fortune. All right, Populous. Yes. That game changed your life. Oh, it just completely changed. Unbelievably, right? Yeah, unbelievably. You know, before then, we were destined for, well, nothing really. Mm -hmm. uh, at, at its peak, it accounted for a third of all Electronic Arts' revenue. Wow. Gosh. And and it was, you know, that was incredible. And we got that, I got this phone call and he said, how does it feel to be a millionaire? What he omitted to tell me <laughs> is that our royalty rate was so low and it was months before we got any money. Right. But, but that was a life changing moment wow. for sure. Um, I think this yeah. that might be a nice time to, to reveal a little something extra right. you brought. What? I'm so I hope I've got this right. So right. do you remember why or how you came up with the name Bullfrog for the studio? That was actually in a pub called the Prince Albert. Right. And we were talking about all sorts of names like um, digital dreams mm -hmm. and, you know, something clever with words. I've seen uh, an old magazine uh, article where, where someone asked actually that question, how many years ago would that have been? Like yeah. in the early 90s. And there was a picture of a ceramic bullfrog that that's was in right. the building. That's right. Uh, is uh, it, is it, <laughs> I'd be amazed if you... Oh my God. <laughs> Where uh, the hell did you find that? So we thought we saw this picture in the, the magazine uh, article that that's they mentioned. It. And there was, there was someone selling these online and they had one left. Um, God, that yeah. is it. Do you yeah. Oh, no, 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 absolutely. Gosh, that's incredible. Uh, How the hell did you find <laughs> You must have spent a fortune on it. Well, uh, I, I mean, it was, I, I think it was more just, it was good luck that we found the last person to, uh, yeah, that to own. Is, that is it. Was, that is it. That was, that's amazing. No, that was, I haven't seen that for, what, 30 years? Probably? <laughs> yeah, just about 30 years. Well, uh, mind you, I haven't seen any of these things <laughs> for, for all that time. So, yeah, that was incredible. Now, at this point, we were acquired by Electronic Arts. Right, so that's <clears> after <throat> making Populous, which they must they, have been thrilled by. Yeah, th totally thrilled by. We made Power Mongo. Which, which I, I think was that one of the first, like, because the difference between Populous and Power Mongo, well, there were a few differences, but one of the yeah. big ones is that you can you can manually pick the units and tell them to move. Yes. Um, whereas yeah. in Populous, they react to what you're exactly. doing. Exactly, exactly. That is one of the earliest RTS games I think out it, there, right? Well, mm, you it see... It how you define <sighs> RTS, but... That, this could have been the first true RTS game. Wow. Except for one slight problem, and that was me being rubbish as a designer. <laughs> because you, this is the thing about design, and this, this is the game that taught me mm -hmm. this thing. When you're designing a game, you let reality get in, in, in the way of right. gameplay. What I thought with, with Powermonger is, well, you know, I, we can control these units and send them places, and that, that felt okay, but, how are these orders getting to these wow. people? Wow. Okay. And and you know because it, it was set in a you know medieval world. How are these orders getting to these people? And that's when I came up. The stu I got obsessed with. Well, the, the, you, we could have a little run and run across the land. But I thought I know it'll be carrier pigeon. We'll have right. a carrier pigeon take it. And that was such a stupid idea <laughs> because it meant that the point and click side just wasn't immediate. And you compare that with something like Star Wars. Yeah. It's all about the immediacy of that point and click. That's incredible though that you uh, what you saw as an issue was was actually the thing that would go on to define a genre yeah. that is Well, it, 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 but it was it, if I hadn't have put that in, then I you know, I think that Powermonger would have been uh, exponentially better game. I think if you said which game did you enjoy doing the least, I think it was it was popular. Across too. the whole the whole lot. Yeah, I right, reckon okay. so. I just made the mistake of adding too many features mm -hmm. into it. When we were acquired, I made this stupid request to be a vice president of Electronic Arts, 
Be, mainly because I was just really curious, you know, who is this big American company? You know, I, I realized after a while, this is just, you know, I'm, I'm not designing anymore. I'm not programming anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sitting in meetings over in America all the time. So I got really, really frustrated, so frustrated that at this point, when Dungeon Keeper was, was going on, I actually, <clears throat> a year before Dungeon Keeper was finished, I actually told them I wanted to leave. So around at my house, we're, we're pretty drunk, and I'm talking to Tim. I said, Tim, you know, I, I'm thinking of leaving. Mm -hmm. And so he said, right, let's send the email. Yeah, this is it. And, well, this is it, we'll send the email. Yep. So literally, we typed, uh, effective immediately, I want to leave Electronic Arts, fresh return. Nice. <laughs> and then I woke up in the morning, I think, oh, what, what the fuck have I done? Aside from maybe the way that you, you handed in your resignation, yeah. was that the right time to, for you to step away, do you think? I, I, it, it was just a, a stupid idea. Oh, really? I didn't, well, it was a stupid idea at the time. You know, here I had a team of, you know, I think 150 people there because right. one of the things that they wanted to do is to use Bullfrog to found Studio Europe, which mm -hmm. is actually still in Guildford now, even today. And, you know, I hadn't thought through any of those consequences before right. I sent, uh, sent the email off. But then this started, you know, it was kind of lighting and blue touch paper. It was, it was impossible to reverse. I mm -hmm. couldn't kind of say, hey, by the way, I did, I was a bit drunk last yeah, night. Yeah, just kidding. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I, just, I flew over, um, I flew over to America. I, you know, handed my notes in properly this time. And they they said, right, here's the consequences. Mm -hmm. You know, the Dungeon Keeper's not going to have a designer anymore. And so I said, well, look, rather than leave now, I'll leave when Dungeon Keeper's finished. And they said, well, that's no good because, you know, we, how do we know you, you'll be off, you know, recruiting the team? And I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll take the team, which was only seven of us, mm -hmm. I'll take it and we'll work in my house and we'll, we'll finish the game off and then I'll leave. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's what we did. Well, how, how do you feel about the Bullfrog era, like, in front of you? Is this, is, do you have, is these was, mostly happy it was, memories? It was, fun. it was an amazing time. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. You know, I went from being a kind of degenerate, uh, almost bankrupt. Big bean salesman. Big bean salesman, <laughs> desperate to get the approval of a girl that would never even look at me. Um, to 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 being one of the most renowned people in the industry mm. in in the space of in the space of seven years, seven and a half years. And um, that when you go through something like that, it, it's. Uh, it's an incredible adventure. That seems like a, a nice place to uh, to move on to the next yeah, the next the chapter next then. Uh, so yeah, so the, this is Lionhead. Yeah, no no uh, red velvet unveiling this no, time, I'm afraid. But you've got um, um, the Xbox Connect. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I figured that might be part of this story. Across the room, or do you? <laughs> you're absolutely welcome yeah. to see what you're. When you start anything, the big problem actually isn't the game idea; it's mm -hmm. the team. Right. It's, it, it's a team, and I had this incredibly restrictive um, covenant, meaning I couldn't take any of the people from Bullfog, completely fair enough. And that was, um, that, was, that was pretty challenging, but we did end up finding probably the, I think, one of the greatest teams the industry has ever known, mm -hmm. really. Yeah, so Black and White, it ends up being in development for quite a long time, is it? Four years. Four years as well. Years. Um, but, but hang on, hang on. It's just get the information. It took a year to build the team. Right. It took another year to make all the tools mm -hmm. because, you know, it's so different nowadays because we've got Unity and we've got Unreal and we've got, you know, an enormous amount of middleware. Every pixel that we that was was on the screen, every sound that you heard that was 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 driven from an engine that we worked. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of infrastructure that had to be built up. I mean we went into E3, we got game of the show at E3, which sound which was an amazing thing. I mean with that, that E3 probably has to be one of the most incredible experiences in my life. Right. The queue of people to get in to see the game was was incredibly long. 
And it sort of happened at the show. Itself. And it all happened at the show. And I don't really, to this under, uh, day, understand why. Well, I think you, I think you are very good at talking about yeah. your games. I think that is. Yeah, and that's got me into a lot of trouble. Yeah, I guess we should talk about that a little bit. It's more recently, you said at one point you were going to stop talking to the press. Yeah, it's a stupid thing to say because you know it's it's like sulking. The rule which I think I should adhere to for as long as I possibly can is I shouldn't talk about a game that hasn't been released. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't hype a game. And what I did with all of these games really was, and this is not an excuse at all because I fully take on my shoulders the, you know, what, what people's perception of what I was saying was. Really what I was doing is, is talking to people in the same way as I talk to the team. If you're going to make a, a game like Fable, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you say let's make the greatest game role-playing game of all time? What, what, what possible reason would you mm -hmm. want to make a game, a role-playing game, without trying to make it the best role-playing game of all time? And so I would talk very, you know, very much about the passion of what I was doing and the ideas that I was having at that particular moment. And what I didn't realize until right after this is that became a promise. Mm -hmm. In people's minds, that became a promise. Now, if you were to go into 22 Cans today and you were to talk to any team member in there, they'll probably turn around to you and say, you know what, the working with Peter is fine, but the number of ideas that we implement that are then thrown away right. is just legion. Okay. And that's always been true. Mm -hmm. You know, my philosophy is, and, and, and it really kind of goes back to the Powermonger days, if, if, if you put something in the game, you can have every idea for a game you want. Mm -hmm. And you can stuff it in there, but sometimes they're like pieces from another piece for jigsaw. They just don't fit. My feeling is that I did over promise. I over promise not because I wanted to, to, to lie to people or, or because I wanted for people to believe something that game wasn't there. It's something that I believed at the time. Do you, do you see any, any similarities between uh yourself and like we've seen more recently with Sean Murray and uh, No Man's mm. Sky and a, a similar kind of yeah. um, f exciting eventually yeah. toxic relationship yeah. with with the audience because of those No reasons. Sean he he's just works down the road yeah and I, I you know when he was talking about No Man's Sky I could hear the tone in his voice and you you you, you would have to be you'd have to I don't have to be a piece of rock not to be excited by what he was saying mm -hmm. And what he was doing was exactly what I did. He was talking about what he wanted the game to become, not the, what the game became at launch. A lot of the other, other companies in the industry have PR people and they control the message. And that message is, you know, there's a, kind of, there's a logic to it. And then you've got people like me and Sean go out and, and do it. But you, so you think now with, with games like Legacy, you, you sort of have the right kind of relationship with it? And... Yeah, I mean, there, there was a... There, I did, Do you have I, to fight that instinct a little bit as it come back? Uh, I mean, I'd love to tell you about the game. I'd love to show you the game. I, there's every atom of my body wants to show it off to you. And, um, but I, that would be catastrophically wrong. That's the, pro that's the real promise is that I shouldn't hype the game, I shouldn't talk about the game until it's finished. Mm -hmm. If you go through the progression of this, what's happening in the industry? The boxes are getting smaller. The boxes are definitely <laughs> getting s smaller, but the teams are getting bigger. Yeah. And it's really up until about this point, mm -hmm. up until the end of Black and White 2, yeah. that it's not a fable the, the, the amount of crunch that went on in the industry was just ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, black and white, I think I worked and most of the team worked every single day without a break or holiday for a minimum of 14, 16 hours a day. Every you know, Monday through Sunday. I'm, I'm right thinking like on a personal level, you, uh, you now have a family and yeah. that's, that, that didn't happen until after black and white, right? Is that... Because it, I guess yeah, you just had I, no I personal didn't, life I didn't, whatsoever. in fact, I, I'd met my wife 
um, it was in the kitchen now. I met my wife before that, oh, okay. but we hadn't been out on a date. The game was due to be finished in, um, firstly due to be finished in, in the December, and then we slipped it mm -hmm. to the January, and then we slipped again to the February, and then we slipped again to, the, to March, getting in real trouble from everybody. <laughs> and she had sent me a text at the, the, at the end of February saying, it's been, it's been too long, mm -hmm. I'm going to go and live back up north and you know, this is goodbye. And I sent her a text back saying, just give me another three weeks and then I'll finish. And as soon as Black and White was finished, we went out on our first date. Huge parts of your career required a lot of crunch, a lot of um, yeah, yeah. overtime. It's something that the, it feels like the games industry is starting to push back against that now. Absolutely. Now, if anyone's in the office after seven o'clock, then I say you're going to have to go home now. Right. All right. So uh, we've we've gone a long way through uh, this yeah. this interview without mentioning Fable. So yes. I feel like yeah. that might yeah. that might be a good time to do it. Um, yeah. This is the, this is the funny this is the funny thing yeah. is that <clears throat> this was designed by someone called Dean Carter and coded mostly by someone called Simon Carter, mm -hmm. and then later on. Um, in the Bullfrog days, both of them started working on Dungeon Keeper. And we're, we're, we're working away on Dungeon Keeper together. And at that moment, they happened to mention, and we, you know, this is after I've been sitting next to them for years, <laughs> they happened to mention that they worked on something called Druid 2. Wow. So they would eventually go on to found their own studio. Uh, was it called Blue Box? Yes, Big right? Blue Box. Big Blue and this was partly, this was the problem that we had because we can employ people from... Mm -hmm. Oh, from Bullfrog, Bullfrog. yeah, okay. Um, and they're working on something that's called Project Ego to begin with? It was called Project Ego. I mean, originally, very originally, it was called Wish World. Oh, okay, right. And it was about, the, this was the original idea, about having these different wizards that battled away with, against each other right, on okay. the landscape. Nothing like yeah. Fable Got was, it. finally. And so then, how, does it, how does it transition then? We had had loads of conversations while we were doing Dungeon Keeper about the perfect role-playing game. What Dean Carter was just, I mean, breathtaking. He kind of created this world of Albion and all the creatures inside it, but there was nothing really kind of linking it together and making it, uh, making it unique. And that's when we started to say, Hey, why don't we have this idea of good and evil that we had in black and white and mix it into the role-playing game? We also said, which is another very unique thing about Fable, is, you know what, we want to make people laugh. Is Fable 2 your, your favourite of the Fable games? Do you have a favourite? I think it is. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, Fable was... Um, part of Fable was a little bit marred by you know, everyone's reactions to they're not being oak trees and yeah, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, Fable 3 was definitely a game which should have had, in my opinion, another year of development. Yep. But Fable 2, we fought a lot of battles actually with uh, Microsoft at the time about, uh, you know, allowing same-sex relationships. Right, because there was some backlash to that from the first Fable, right? That Yes, um, there was, yeah. And they... they I think they wanted it to be very politically correct. Mm -hmm. You know, middle America was still, you know, very anti um, anything but the, the kind of straight line of sexuality. Mm -hmm. And we, but we fought that fight and we won it. And I'm still proud that we won it. Yeah, to this day. yeah. So there's a, a rumored Fable 4 now in development um, yeah. by, by Playground. Yeah. How do you feel about the idea of a, another core Fable game that you're not part of the development. Is that, is yeah, that strange? Yeah, it's kind of a, it, it's a mixed emotion. Okay. I, mean, I feel proud that the, f the franchise can go on and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the fans out there want another Fable. I feel slightly envious now after a while that they get to work on this, in this cool universe which is Albion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but I'd rather there be another sequel than it just fade away into nothing. Yep. Um, I'm sure Playground will do a fantastic job. Um, I hope they keep the, the humour of the game and I hope they find some way of just injecting a little bit of innovation in there and I'm sure they will. Mm -hmm. And um, 
you know, I, I, I think it would have been so sad to have Fable, you know, die on the altar of Lionhead being closed. And um, at least there's, there's life after that. Oh, so so with, with uh, the Fable games that you worked on, obviously the, we saw these time jumps between uh, Fable, Fable 2, Fable 3, like significant uh, yeah. shifts forwards yeah. uh, each time. Would, would your Fable 4 That's have... the logic thing. Again. Yeah. And that's just, again, it's, it, you, you have this in your mind is, what is it? Yeah, we have to have 500 years past. And we have to have another 500 years <laughs> right, past. Right, because we last time. And, and, you know, because that's what we did last time, but really and truly, if I was working on another fable, I would, although I despise prequels, mm -hmm. I despise pre prequels with the same cast list because you kind of know what's going to happen. Okay. I, you, I think there's such an interesting story to be told before the guild was cr created. Are you in communication with anyone? Do you, is that, no. are you, it's not, that's not part of your life anymore? Uh, no one's no one's asked, and mm -hmm. if they did, I probably would be curious enough to 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 um, take a look. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I definitely, you know, I, I can understand why they wouldn't want someone like me involved because they want to make it their own vision. Sure, and it's completely understandable. It seems kind of weird now to go back to Fable the Journey after talking about those games. So, what a disaster! We know when I first saw Connect. When it was first demoed to me, it was this blinding device. Mm -hmm. it, it, it could, it could recognise, you know, it could recognise any room. It could, it had a camera that had enormous resolution on it. It didn't have field of view issues. It had its own processors on board. It didn't take from the game itself. The, the, you know, all, all the data they were training on was was amazing and fantastic so you could you could you know you could recognize finger movements stuff like that and then by the time it was cost reduced down to this it was next to, uh, it was almost non-functional so, so you when you first saw it would be around the time you were looking at Madame and Kate and that's right yeah that's right and, and I kept just kept saying the same thing over and over again to Microsoft unless you're playing a party game or perhaps a sports game, I just want to fucking sit down. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to stand up. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do this the whole time. I actually want to do things with subtlety. Yep. I mean, if I, if I was really going to be a magic user, you know, I wouldn't go like that the whole time to light a cigarette or something. I'd want to go <laughs> like that. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the design of Fable the Journey came about initially it was you know supposed to be this free roaming experience and it was you know it was you know a little bit more story led but there was a relationship with you and your horse and controlling the horse and it ended up being a game that was serving on rails mm -hmm. and it was a real shame because by the time fable journey came out really you know they the connect was seen by the press for and consumers for what it actually is mm -hmm was a device that was, was put into the market far too early, far too soon, um, without any real signature uh, application on it. It sounds like there's a similar story here between the two studios that you, you make uh, an incredibly well received God game. Mm. Um, the studio becomes more successful, more people join it, you start working on games, maybe some sequels, the studio's getting bigger and bigger, eventually there's an acquisition, you get another role that isn't just being a designer. I do. Well, it's, it, it is a story of two chapters, yeah, two, two, two volumes. Yeah. And they're, 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 they're quite similar. Do you, do you feel now that you, you've left you and started 22 Cans, is that, is that working now? Is that you, have you figured out this yeah, I mean, problem that you face? You know, anything that you do in life, every, any road that you take in life, there's always times that you look back over your shoulder and think to yourself, why have I done that? Mm -hmm. And there's definitely things I miss. I miss some other people that I used to work with, that I used to work with. Um, uh, definitely, I'm. I'm still. It's still a terrifying thing to ha have to understand this audience that 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 we're going after, and to appreciate that audience right. and to give them something new and fresh and different. And sometimes you try things out, and we tried. You know, started with Curiosity, and that was an interesting avenue to take. And then we moved on to Govilus, which was 
disastrous to go on to Kickstarter. And then we went on to the trail and all the time, it, I was all the time thinking about how a person that plays maybe a match three game, how are they going to even attempt to understand mm -hmm. uh, that game? I, sh I should say by the way, it looks like we've, um, we've been uh, a mess here and, and documented your entire yeah. gaming career without, uh, without 22 cans, but that's because their games can fit on here. No, that's right. At least for now, Le yeah. Legacy is a PC game, right? So uh, is that, do you we, don't know yet. Yeah, we're not going to talk about Legacy. <laughs> yeah, but um, I, 22 cans is very present in this room, which just happens yeah. to fit It'd in your pocket. Us, yeah. Do you have a game here that you are, proudest might not be the right word, is there a game here that uh, you feel the most affection to, like that really was a, a defining moment in your career, or they? Well, they, 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 the moments. defining moment was definitely pop. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think black and white was the incredible development experience, and you know, to take on this idea of incorporating AI, to have an iconless interface, to to have this world which allowed you to be good and evil. I think there were so many unique things. I have that as a special place, and then just Fable Two, and I think. It, it was the, the you know we use the dog in a in a way that people remember mm -hmm. you know they remember the moment when they had that those three choices at the end yep. there wasn't a bug with money <laughs> um, but those three choices in the end so I think those are the those are the three really, the three big games mm -hmm. uh, there. the counter to that is the three big re regrets uh, is Powermonger that needed more time in development, right? for sure. And a, a little less focus on what, what you should do. And pig, music, pig, yeah. no pigeons. Right, okay, right. no pigeons, okay. Um, the movies, there's another game which um, should have... That, the movies, if it was released here, mm -hmm. would have been amazing because the movies came out, you could make a movie, but there was no... YouTube. Yeah, that's right. It was like about a year before YouTube. It was a year before Covering. YouTube, and if we just thought about how, you know, how people distribute those movies, it would have been so much, uh, so much cooler. So that, so it's Powermonger, um, and Powermonger, and that, and then Fable Three mm -hmm. could have been so much better than that actually was. And Fable Journey, which is never seen. <laughs> All right, well, Peter, I, I thank you so much for letting us well, take over your house for no, a little bit whilst we. No, it would thank you it. so much for, firstly, for taking all the effort to put the thing on. It's our pleasure. And secondly, for allowing me to talk for so long. I don't know how long we we'll talk. I have no idea, but I, I've sh I think our camera crew know. <laughs> um, yeah, well, if this is what we like to do. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Cheers. Thank you, thank you very much. This video was sponsored by Skillshare, which is a website for getting better at things that you're not very good at. Like, how do I write off this Amigo A500 I've just bought as a business expense? Thankfully, Skillshare has a bunch of online classes all about bookkeeping, including this one, which Annie and I found to be pretty useful as we approach our second year of working for ourselves. However, if you think accounting is boring, well, I mean, You've got a point. And so Skillshare also offers tutorials for loads of other creative things like video editing, photography, calligraphy, and game development. A premium membership to the site costs around $10 or seven pounds per month. However, if you would like to take a look around the site for free first, well, 500 of you can do that by using this link right here to receive a uh, two month premium membership to Skillshare for nothing, which means you can have a nosy and see if you think it's worth signing up to after that's run out. Cool. All right, that will do it. Thank you so much for watching what is by far our longest video on the channel to date. Uh, we really hope you like it as much as we do because we are hopefully gonna do more uh, The Games I Made episodes in the future. Although that being said, they will remain pretty sporadic because we only wanna do them with the right people for the right reasons and we had to buy a lot of stuff. So yeah, maybe not too regularly. Uh, if you do have any suggestions for people you would like us to interview in this format in the future, do let us know in the comments. Uh, we'd definitely be keen to hear uh, who you think would be a fun person to, to talk to in this way. All right, yes, good. That'll be, that'll be it. Uh, I don't know how to wrap up a video that's this long. Um, do you like my Amiga? Bye.